When you're setting up an integral calculation, the left-hand sum and the right-hand sum are good places to start. However, if your function is increasing, the left-hand sum will underestimate the integral, and the right-hand sum will overestimate the integral. Similarly, if your function is decreasing, the left-hand sum will overestimate the integral, and the right-hand sum will underestimate the integral. Now, when you have an overestimate and an underestimate, the solution seems pretty simple. Take the average of the two. But here we run into an interesting question. What exactly do you average, the input values or the output values? It turns out you can do both. If you average the input values, you're using the midpoint rule. It still creates a simple rectangle, but it uses the value of the function in the middle of the step. On the other hand, if you average the output values, you're using the trapezoidal rule. Now, instead of using a rectangle, you're using a trapezoid, which has only a slightly more complicated formula for area. In this code, which is available in a link in the description below, we're integrating x squared, which should give us a value of 1 third when integrated from 0 to 1. In this integration loop, we're using the midpoint rule since we're starting at the midpoint of the first interval. Each time we take a step, we'll be in the middle of the next interval. The answer we get is decently close to 1 third, but not great. In this next code, we're using the trapezoidal rule, which involves evaluating the function at the left edge of the interval and at the right edge of the interval, and then averaging those function values in the trapezoid formula here. This method also gives us an answer that is okay, but not great. It turns out you can combine these two results in Simpson's rule. Here, we're calculating the area given by the midpoint rule. Here, we're calculating the area given by the trapezoidal rule. Finally, we construct a weighted average so that their errors cancel. The answer is significantly better, and we didn't even have to reduce the step size. You should now be able to use the midpoint rule, the trapezoidal rule, and Simpson's rule to calculate the integral of a given function over a given region. Use the codes in the links in the description below to evaluate the following integrals. Next time, we'll take a look at how we can extend these techniques to double and triple integrals involving multiple independent variables.